Manga is one of the most popular forms of literature in the world. One Piece alone has sold over 500 million copies. There are more copies of One Piece than there are of Japanese people, and that's just one manga. If we were to total every single copy of manga to ever exist, that would be a big number. And I'm not doing the math for that. There might be more copies of mangas than there are of Bibles. Excuse me? And I know what you're thinking. With so many authors or mangakas that have published their stories, there's bound to be some that are just bad people, maybe even criminals. And that's why we're here, to expose these authors that have had some trouble with the law. Now let's set some boundaries. What is a criminal? A criminal is someone who committed a crime by breaking the law. Oh my God. The laws in question, Japanese law. Regardless of whether the crime was minor or very serious, all of these people will be referred to as criminals because that's how language works and it makes no sense sometimes. I will say that this video is about real people committing real crimes and it could get pretty disturbing. In order to make this video, I went through articles from Anime News Network that mentioned arrests or charges and then expanded on that with more research. Now let's start with probably the most famous mangaka on this list. The author of Roroni Kenshin or Samurai X, Nobuhiro Watsuki. Rurouni Kenshin is one of the most popular stories and franchises in Japan. It has had all kinds of adaptations and plenty of spin-offs slash sequels. They even just rebooted the anime in 2023. So with all these adaptations then, Watsuki's crime might not be so serious, right? Well, this is where it gets controversial. You see, on November 21, 2017, Watsuki has been charged with possession of a lot of child pornography. The DVDs in question depict nude, real girls between the ages of 10 to 15. There is no question about it. He is absolutely a pedophile. You wow. young boys, Valdez. Are you a madman? And a criminal. But his punishment was only a small fine of $1,900. Basically a slap on the wrist. So why is that? On May 26, 1999, Japan passed an act called Punishment of Activities Related to Child Prostitution and Child Pornography and the Protection of Children. And on Article 7, they defined that anyone caught distributing child pornography would be punished. But they don't mention that owning it is bad. Which is kind of the loophole that caused this horrific industry to thrive. They're more interested in taking down the distributors than the consumers. Even though the consumers are why the distributors exist in the first place, so they both should be equally punished. It was not until 2014 that the Child Pornography Act in Japan was updated to make possession punishable by one year of imprisonment or a fine of $10,000, which to a rich person is still a slap on the wrist. Not to mention that they can also afford good lawyers to maybe lower the fine. So unfortunately, Watsuki still has a career and is still supported by those within the industry. Remember, this man had 20 years to get rid of his collection and he was caught with it, which means he was doing something suspicious that warranted the police to search his place. That's suspicious. That's weird. At the very least, a reboot should not exist. This man is already rich. What does he need the money for? So he could buy back his collection? <laughs> but Watsuki wasn't the only mangaka that got in trouble for possessing child pornography. On December 21, 2021, Kenya Suzuki, mangaka of Oshiete Gakko-chan, was arrested for importing child pornography overseas from Germany. He is even quoted saying that he desperately wanted to acquire nude photos of foreign children that cannot be acquired in Japan. The police recovered around 46 books of child pornography from his house. 
Now, prosecutors wanted him imprisoned for over a year, but the presiding judge, Khan Ishii, suspended his sentence for three years, which means if he can stay out of trouble for three years, he won't go to prison for the one year. Now, Suzuki publicly admitted to his crimes on his Twitter, and although his manga has been suspended for the time being, he is still drawing anime girls with giant titties on his Twitter. So really, was there even a punishment? Now I know what you're thinking. Satsumi is the next mangaka pedophile, and I know it sucks, but once we get past the pedophilia, uh, we can get to the fun crimes. <laughs> but unfortunately, we need to mention Mitsutoshi Shimabukuro, who on August 7, 2002, got arrested for trying to pay a 16-year-old girl 80,000 yen to have sex with him. Yikes. Anyways, he was also convicted and sentenced for two years, but it got suspended for four years, just like Suzuki. During that time, he just kept creating more manga, and eventually in 2008, he found success in Toriko. This guy is also friends with Eiichiro Oda, the mangaka for One Piece, which honestly, Oda, you need to get better friends. Okay, okay, one more pedophile, I hope. Tatsuya Matsuki, the writer for Act Age, not the artist, the writer. The artist, Shiro Uzazaki, has not committed any crimes that I know of. And she seems like a really nice lady, who uh. might be a degenerate. So on August 8, 2020, Matsuki was arrested for inappropriately touching two middle school girls on a bike. Matsuki would ride up to a girl, grope her chest, and then make his escape. He got caught on camera and confessed to his crimes. He was sentenced to one year and six months in jail but it was suspended for three years like the others. At the very least, his career as a writer for manga has ended, as Act Age was canceled. Too bad he wasn't friends with Oda, otherwise he'd still have a career. Maybe he should act his age next time. So we're done with the diddlers. There might be some discussion in the comments on whether this probation system in Japan is a good idea or if they should have gone directly to jail, but I'm just gonna move on because this part was really icky. Now let's talk about a real crime. Piracy. Hitode Jimbo, a mangaka who you might be familiar with if you frequent a certain site. On February 19, 2013, Jimbo was arrested on suspicions of uploading video games, animated videos, and other files online without the copyright holder's permission. The 38-year-old suspect allegedly used the file sharing program called Share. In Japan, copyright protection is taken very seriously. But in this case, Jimbo was uploading hentai games from A1C, and he apparently uploaded over 15,000 files to be downloaded for free. At least it wasn't child pornography for once. As for what happened to him, I don't know. He stopped tweeting right before he was arrested. So either he has a new name, or he's been in jail for 10 years. Which if he did get convicted for violating copyright, the maximum sentence for that is 10 years. Things have been kind of heavy, so let's talk about Death Note. There have been a lot of incidents of people creating a Death Note to list people they want to see dead. There was even a group that killed someone in Belgium and wrote a note next to their body saying that I am Kira. But this isn't about them. This is about Takashi Obata, the artist for Death Note. What kind of crime did a man who drew one of the most iconic crime mangas could have committed? Why, he was caught with a knife that was too long in his car. You call that a knife? This is a knife. In Japan, you cannot have a knife longer than six centimeters. And Obata's knife was a whopping eight centimeters. So on September 6, 2006, he was pulled over for not having his headlights on in 1 a.m. And I guess the cop just saw his knife on the seat because it seems weird to search his car for it. Regardless, he is criminal scum. I mean, what kind of monster would have a knife two centimeters long? Oh, so he can use it to cut firework when he goes camping? All right, Obata, you get a pass. Takeshi Obata! On the topic of crime mangas, Mamoru Goda, the mangaka for Mori no Asagao. On April 21, 2013, Goda was charged for indecent behavior with a woman by throwing a ball at her and knocking her down, which I think that's called assault, but you know what? That could be a localization issue. So actually, it could be as I found a more in-depth article in Japanese. Bear in mind, it could be mistranslated by Google. So if you want to translate it yourself, the links to these articles will be in the description. But just to sum this up, 
Gota had a female assistant or acquaintance that he would frequently harass and attack. He was stressed out by work and had anger issues as he was quoted, I can't do my work because of anger. What will you do? Well, he would want the 24 year old assistant to perform lewd acts to relieve his stress. And she probably didn't want to do that, which led to Gota to get more violent and throw a baseball at her. At some point, he pushed her down and kicked her in the back of the head. She got hospitalized for two weeks, but surprisingly, he wasn't arrested for that, as the 24-year-old victim was afraid to report the crime. Gota was eventually arrested for indecent behavior. In court, he was seen wearing a Michael Jordan t-shirt and basketball shorts. He pretty much admitted to the crime. Luckily, the woman he attacked is okay, but he made a lot of excuses in court. Anyway, he got a three-year suspended sentence, and he also said that he was very sorry to the woman he attacked. But you would think a 40-year-old man who made a crime manga would realize that this sort of behavior is not acceptable and a serious crime. Now you might be thinking, this video has been full of creepy old men. Where are the women? Don't women commit crimes? Where is the gender equality? Well, there is a female mangaka that was arrested. Megami Igarashi, otherwise known as Rokodaneshko, who is the mangaka for Deco Man, a manga about a woman's fascination of making artwork around vaginas. Now, if you frequent the adult entertainment of Japan, you might notice that the genitalia is usually censored. Um. But in some places in Japan, there are festivals celebrating the penis. In England, you don't have penis festivals? Not as far as I'm aware. Well, welcome to the land of the rising penis. So Igarashi noticed this double standard and started to make an art piece around vaginas. She decided to make a kayak that was shaped like one. She called it the mom boat. Get it? Cause ma, as in manko. That's how you say vagina in Japanese. And in order to achieve this, she started a crowdfund. While she was successful in raising money, one of the donor awards was a 3D print scan of her own vagina. This is what got her in trouble. So on July 12, 2014, she became the first woman to ever be charged with obscenity in Japan. Her arrest became international news and tons of women stood behind her in support. Because well, it just seems strange as you can just buy ona holes in the shape of popular JV stars. So you would think this wouldn't be an issue, but she got arrested twice for her art and ultimately had to pay a fine of 400,000 yen. Who knew that distributing 3D data of a 42-year-old woman's vagina was a much more serious crime than collecting child pornography? Now, I saved the best for last because this person didn't commit a sex crime, he committed a normal crime. Being the shit out of a man. Takamori Asaki, or better known as Iki Kajiwara, is the writer of such popular works such as Tiger Mask and Ashida Nojo. He has lived quite an intense life. I mean, just look at this man. He looks like the main character in a Yakuza game, and he was probably friends with some Yakuza. Because on May 25, 1983, Kajiwara was arrested for assaulting Toshikazu Ijima, deputy editor at Monthly Shonen Magazine. This one arrest exposed his other crimes he previously committed, such as assaulting pro wrestler Antonio Inoki, assaulting a hostess at an Akasaka club, general gang violence, blackmail, and giving young people weed which is pretty impressive how he was able to commit that many crimes while still balancing his manga career. But after that arrest, his career ended. He was writing his autobiography called My Confession, but it was never finished as he sadly died of pancreatitis. But his life did not end there. As 10 years later, his only daughter, Pai Xiaoyan, was kidnapped and murdered. Well, that was kind of depressing, but you know what? It's over for now. Of course, there are probably some more mangakas out there that have committed horrific crimes, such as Issei Sagawa, who is a murderer and cannibal, but I think we can stop here. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed your time. And as always, I hope you have a good day. Okay, bye. Do not diddle kids, it's no good diddling kids. Thank you.